This is Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 11. Coverage you can count on. Breaking right now, a crash involving an Amtrak train in Sanford. The tracks are shut down, so holiday train travelers can only sit and wait. The train collided with a car about 90 minutes ago. And now the tracks are shut down at Orange Boulevard and Monroe Road in Sanford. Channel 9's Jeff Deal just got to the scene of this breaking story. And Jeff, two people are injured as far as we know now. That's what we understand. Two people suffered minor injuries. Both of those people were inside that car, although we do understand that one of them did suffer a head injury and may have been taken to the hospital just to be checked out, which is pretty amazing. The minor injuries, considering how big this passenger train is, this Amtrak train was cruising through a little while ago. We're told that an older woman was driving a car. It stalled out on the track. She was not able to remove it before the train got there. The train came through, crashed into the car. Again, two minor injuries from the people in that car. Uh, we understand that nobody on board the train was injured. We saw an employee from the train. He seemed like he was more annoyed at the delay than anything else. The tracks are shut down. That means no other trains can come through this area either. No word on how long the train will be here, how long it will be before it can get back up and moving. Obviously, passengers on board the train are stranded. We have not been given any indication as to how many passengers are actually on board this train, but we are told that this was a train that was headed from Tampa to New York for this holiday weekend. So obviously, their plans are on delay. Emergency crews are on scene. They're all on the other side of the train where the car is, but uh, they are working to try to get this situation cleaned up and uh, get it all taken care of and get this train back on its tracks and on the way. For now, reporting live in Sanford in Seminole County, Jeff Deal, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. All right, thanks, Jeff. It was also a rough night for travelers on I-95 in Brevard County. All lanes are back open now, but earlier a car fire caused big backups. This was the scene in the southbound lanes near Malabar about 7 o'clock tonight. And if you look closely, you can see some of the smoke and flames in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Traffic backed up while crews cleared the scene. Fortunately, nobody was hurt in this. Tens of millions of Americans are on the road or in the air tonight for the Thanksgiving holiday. AAA predicts 42 and a half million Americans will travel this weekend, 90% of them by car. About 4 million people will fly despite a 20% increase in ticket prices from last year. Some flights out of Orlando International are running a little late tonight. To check your flight, use the flight tracker in the web link section of WFTV.com. Temperatures have already started to drop tonight as a cold front moves through Central Florida in time for the Thanksgiving holiday. Certified Chief Meteorologist Tom Terry is tracking it all right now in Severe Weather Center 9. We are cooling down. It's not going to be cold, but it's certainly cooler than we've been in recent days. Right now down to 63 up in Marion County, 72 in Titusville, 68 in downtown Orlando. We are cooler than we were this time last night, courtesy of the cold front, which has just cleared southern Brevard County, leaving us with temperatures about... Uh, five degrees cooler than average, 57 in Orlando tonight, 50 up in Ocala. So not excessively cool, but we are going to see even more changes over the next uh, several days, including your travel holiday forecast in just a minute, Bob. All right, see you then, Tom. Be sure you're ready for the Thanksgiving holiday weather with updates on Eyewitness News Daybreak starting at 5 a.m. Police say this Seminole County teenager was plotting a Columbine-style massacre for Lake Brantley High School. And new tonight, Eyewitness News spoke to a student who got one of the threatening messages. And then I saw the messages that were like, you will not survive, and that's just scary. And that student said she didn't even know Emmanuel Costas. Investigators say the 18-year-old repeatedly posted threats on Facebook and even put up a countdown for the mass shooting he says he was planning. As Channel 9's Jeff Deal reports, investigators say Costa was planning to storm the cafeteria and start shooting three days before the anniversary of the Columbine attack. Oh, he was always like, why aren't you replying to me? Jessica Ross, a 10th grader at Lake Brantley High School, is talking about junior Lake Brantley student Emmanuel Costas, the person she says threatened her with instant messages on Facebook. Messages like, you will not survive, NBK or natural born killer will strike. Costas is the student now facing attempted murder charges after Altamont Springs police say he planned a shooting massacre at the school. We believe he's targeting, targeting uh, multiple hundreds of students. 
Police were tipped off when a student allegedly received a threatening text message from Costas, then read his Facebook page. Police found the page contained a countdown to the planned massacre in April. It read, a day of terror will strike upon everyone's soul. Everyone, prepare yourselves. 417 is approaching. Let the carnage begin. In his backpack, they found documents indicating he had been planning a Columbine-style massacre for two years. Jessica Ross said she'd seen the threat sent to her, but said she didn't actually know Costa, so she never replied. But today, when she saw him on the news, made the connection to his messages. And I was like in shock because I don't know him. And I was like, oh, I'm not on the list because I don't even know him. And then I saw the messages that were like, you will not survive. And that's just scary. Jeff Deal, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. The school district says Costas has been suspended and will likely be expelled. The boy's father was in court during his son's first appearance, but not on behalf of his son. This is Costas's father in a blue jumpsuit waiting to go before the judge himself this morning. At one point, the judge did ask if he was involved with the plot his son is accused in. It was then determined that he was in jail for an unrelated cocaine possession charge. It's been nearly a week now since Orlando mother Michelle Parker disappeared. And tonight her co-workers have joined the effort to try and bring her home. Channel 9's Renee Stoll is live at the search command site on Oak Ridge Road in Orlando. And Renee, the Thanksgiving holiday will not stop the search for this mother of three. Certainly won't. On the eve of Thanksgiving, family and friends still man the command post in the search for Michelle Parker. Meanwhile, co-workers at the bar she worked at are taking to their website and their 8,000 fans on Facebook, hoping that a customer may have some clues. On the door, on the counters, and even on the bartenders. 33-year-old Michelle Parker's face is everywhere at the barn in Sanford. She has a big following. A lot of people come here for her. Erica Timms and Parker worked together for the last six months at this back bar. The customers love her. Yeah. She's, she's like a magnet. Everybody wants to be around her. She's always happy, always smiling. Tim says Parker served up drinks and a good time to everyone she came across. She's always making up drinks that the customers love. Um, we dance behind the bar and have a good time. But for the last week, the mood among co-workers has changed. We knew it right away when she didn't show up for work that something had to be wrong. You can tell everybody that's what they're thinking about when they're here. The barn now has turned to their customers to help in the search. We have people come here all the time and it may be their first time and walking in the door they may see a poster. Uh, may jog their memory for something. With a couple hundred expected to come through tonight, the barn is donating $2 of each patron's cover charge to Parker's family and the search effort. Now, the barn tells us that they don't believe that any of the customers have anything to do with Michelle's disappearance. They are planning some more benefits on December 2nd and 10th. As for the family here, some of the people from the barn have tried to help and provide Thanksgiving meals for tomorrow. For people who would love to give thanks, they find their missing mom soon. In South Orlando, Renee Stoll, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Now, earlier today, police released this new picture of Michelle Parker, and they want people to pay special attention to that cross necklace that she's wearing. They say she was wearing this cross on Thursday when she disappeared. You can count on Eyewitness News for continuing coverage of the search for Michelle Parker. Watch for any new updates on Eyewitness News and WFTV.com. New tonight, we have the letter that Florida A&M University sent to its band director to fire him following the hazing death of a band member. The letter to Dr. Julian White says he was fired for alleged misconduct and or incompetences involving confirmed reports and allegations of hazing. Last Saturday, Robert Champion collapsed and died after the Florida Classic in Orlando. The Orange County Sheriff's Office is investigating the reports of hazing. Right now, dozens of people are already camped out around Central Florida waiting to score big deals on Black Friday. Some shoppers have been sitting in line since the beginning of the week. Channel 9's Ryan Hughes is live at the Best Buy in Ocoee right now. And Ryan, how many people are out there? Bob, around 30 people are out here tonight. The line ends way down there and begins way up here. For the past two days, Stephen Morton has called this home. It's been okay. A little lonely at first because it was just me and the guy in front. He and more than 30 others formed a makeshift town in front of the Best Buy on West Colonial Drive in Ocoee. The Black Friday midnight opening can't come soon enough. Most people in line have waited days on end to get their hands on a 42-inch Sharp TV for $199. It's the most appealing Black Friday deal at Best Buy stores nationwide. Other bargains include netbooks for $150 and brand name laptops for as little as 200 bucks. 
Sheila Hernandez has been here since 2.30 this afternoon. The UCF student has spent most of her time studying with the occasional interruption. Any weird books? Oh, yeah. I'm, I probably was in like a couple pictures because people keep taking pictures. Braylon Ross is just 17 and doing a deed for her mom who wants a 42-inch TV. Would you say it's worth it? For her, probably, but for me, it's going to her room, so. At 10 tomorrow night, store managers will pass out tickets to these diehard shoppers to keep things in order Friday morning. We want to make sure that we can try to make everything as safe and as enjoyable of a shopping adventure, kind of, as we possibly can. We stop by other area stores like Kmart, Walmart, and Target, and so far there are no lines at other doorsteps anticipating Black Friday bargains. And back here live tonight inside the Best Buy in Okoe. The store is closed right now, but workers are in here putting the finishing touches on things in preparation for Black Friday. Live in Okoe in Orange County, Ryan Hughes, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Now, if you're planning a Black Friday shopping adventure, here are a couple of malls that will be open tomorrow night. The Florida Mall will open at midnight, and the Prime Outlets off International Drive will also open at midnight. A Lake Mary doctor is in jail tonight on Medicaid fraud and drug trafficking charges. Dr. Ronald Lynch runs Integrative Medicine on Lake Mary Boulevard. Authorities say he wrote prescriptions and even billed Medicaid after the DEA revoked his drug license back in January. He now faces more than 50 counts of drug and fraud charges. As a community, we put so much faith in our doctors, and at the end of the day, they're all really our strangers, and we have to really check out who we put our faith and trust in. Lynch will go before a judge for arraignment on January 3rd. Florida's Republican president of the state Senate, Mike Herodopoulos, says the party ousted its former leader over politics. Herodopoulos told lawyers former chairman Jim Greer wasn't raising enough money for the party. He made the comments during a deposition in Greer's multi-million dollar lawsuit. Greer claims the party owes him a severance package. Jim Greer, who's from Seminole County, faces criminal charges for embezzling money from the GOP. A four-year-old child who fell from a window in Orlando has died. And tonight we confirm the little boy passed away on Sunday. He fell from an apartment window last Thursday at the Reserve Apartments off Metro West Boulevard. The boy was rushed to Arnold Palmer Hospital where he had surgery and several days of treatment. But sadly, he didn't survive. Investigators say it was an accident. A West Melbourne City Council member is defending his questionable behavior during a traffic stop. Michael Hazlitt said he did nothing wrong when he was pulled over for running a red light last month. He claims police have been harassing him since he started looking into corruption in the department. During the traffic stop, Hazlitt was captured on an audio recording talking about police funding. I go to cut your budget 5% if, uh, I guess. I'm if not done with this way. Yet, okay? Hazlitt said the comment was nothing new because he had publicly tried to cut 5% of the department's funding in the past. NASA is back on schedule to launch its Mars rover from Brevard County this weekend. NASA workers continue prepping Curiosity for Saturday's launch. They'll begin moving the Atlas V rocket out to the launch pad Friday morning. NASA delayed the launch by a day because crews had to replace a battery. And tonight we're getting a better idea of how NASA will use the information from that mission to Mars. The Curiosity rover is equipped with sensors to detect sources for oxygen, fuel and water. NASA will use that data to determine what will be needed by astronauts on a future future mission to Mars. Scientists are also trying to solve dozens of other risks associated with the six month space flight. I don't think of it as a mountain too high. I think of it as a challenge uh, that we are going to rise to. NASA hopes to land the first human on Mars in the mid 2030s. Count on Eyewitness News to bring you live coverage of Curiosity's launch at 10.02 Saturday morning. News tonight, we found out the Orange County Sheriff's Office has ordered SUVs for some deputies to accommodate their size and weight. Channel 9's Darlene Jones went to find out if the deputies are getting special treatment. Orange County deputies patrol the streets sometimes 11 hours a day. Nearly 300 ride around in gas-guzzling expensive SUVs. And we found out some have the SUVs simply because they're too tall or overweight for the Chevy Impalas. They're in these cars often for 11 hours. Therefore, they need the extra space. Lauren Ellison thought we were joking when we told him about the agency's policy. I think that's crazy. 
I've never heard of anything like that. Officials said the SUVs like the Tahoe only cost the agency $25,000 because they're bought in bulk. The Impala, driven by a majority of deputies, cost $20,000. This Chevy Tahoe gets about 11 miles to the gallon. Compare that to this Impala, which gets about 18. And last year, the agency spent $5 million on fuel. There's nothing you can do to make these deputies lose weight. That we can make them do, there's nothing that we can make them do to get taller or shorter or to lose weight or anything like that. We do encourage everyone. Officials said the 37 deputies who drive the SUVs because of their height, weight or medical issues like a bad back have to go through a strict approval process, which includes an assessment to test how well they get in and out of different vehicles. Some we talked to said to them it sounds like an unnecessary perk at the cost of taxpayers. It's strange. People's tax dollars are tied up. I drive an SUV, but I pay for it. In Orange County, Darlene Jones, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Officials said a lot of requests for SUVs are denied, and the uh, majority that are approved are for people who are too tall, not overweight. Officials in Osceola and Volusia counties don't assign vehicles based on height or weight. Seminole County said they only do it if a deputy is too tall for a cruiser. An Orange County landlord is facing attempted murder charges tonight for the ruthless method he used to try and evict a family from a mobile home he owned. Investigators say John Miller jumped in his bulldozer and plowed right through the mobile home while the renters were still inside, including toddlers. The tenant shot this video for us. They say Miller tried to evict them a week early when he just lost it. The family is now homeless for Thanksgiving. I have nothing left. I don't know where to start. I don't know where to begin. Investigators say when they told Miller the trailer was a complete loss, he said, quote, good, I got what I wanted then. New tonight, an Orange County man will spend the next 15 years in prison for stealing millions of dollars from companies. The U.S. Attorney's Office says Michael Burgess tried to pull off a $94 million fraud scheme as manager of a development company off Sand Lake Road called Prosperity International. He took fees from companies and promised to find them funding for large developments, but never came through with any money. A cruise ship employee is accused of sexually assaulting a teenager aboard a Carnival cruise ship. Federal officials say Kurt Jordan assaulted the 14-year-old girl while she was on vacation with her family on the Carnival Liberty earlier this month. The ship sails out of Miami. Jordan was arrested by the FBI. He is scheduled for a court hearing next month. Two Port Orange police officers have resigned for exchanging prescription pills. An internal affairs report says Officer Richard Vingara obtained prescription pills from Officer Brian Rizzo. Both officers had legal prescriptions, but the report shows that Vingara wanted Rizzo's pills to replace some of the tablets he was missing. We're told the officers are not facing criminal charges. Flags flew at half staff at the Orange County Courthouse today to honor a Central Florida soldier killed in Afghanistan. Hundreds of mourners gathered at a funeral service in Altamont Springs today for fi private first class Teddy Rushing. The Seminole State College graduate was killed in combat in Afghanistan on Veterans Day. Rushing, who is also the son of an Orlando police officer, will be buried with full military honors at Arlington National Cemetery on Monday. The federal government gave California $1 billion today that was originally slated for Florida, but Governor Rick Scott rejected the money from the Department of Transportation. It would have paid for a portion of a high-speed train from Tampa to Orlando. Now California is going to use it to build a train out there. The state predicts that project is going to cost $100 billion. A rescue mission in Orlando served the largest number of Thanksgiving meals in its history today. The Orlando Union Rescue Mission served 1,348 people hot meals. The mission says they're getting an influx of mothers, grandmothers, and children who are homeless. The organization says overall it served nearly 50% more meals this year compared to last year. And one in five Central Florida adults and children struggle with hunger. So Nine Family Connection has teamed up with Dr. Oz for a holiday food drive. It starts on Monday. You can find out how to donate at NineFamily.com. Just like clockwork, a subtle cold front, kind of subtle, moved in, a prelude to what's coming. Just to take the, take the edge off. Take the so edge off, Tom. <laughs> yeah, it's been a little warm. You know, it was 83 today. We have a tough down here. If you made it in town, congratulations. Got a lot of folks are still stuck up north with all kinds of... Weather woes, our cold front moved by right on schedule earlier today. Temperatures will slowly fall over the next several hours into the upper 50s, and we have begun to clear things out, just cleaning up a few clouds, and we'll keep it mostly clear in downtown. Late night activities, looks like the city beautiful, uh, living up.
up to his billing 68 degrees with a northwest wind that will be a little bit gustier tomorrow, especially once it switches out of the northeast coming in off the Atlantic. That'll keep us a bit cooler tomorrow. Right now we're 63 up in Ocala, 68 Sanford, Kissimmee and St. Cloud, and we're still falling overnight tonight, really after midnight. We talked about this on our six o'clock broadcast that as we really got past midnight, that's when the cool air would really catch up to the front. Temperatures will fall a bit more quickly, but not all that cold, but a pleasant start for your Thanksgiving Day morning. 73 degrees, breezy and cooler with a few clouds toward the shore in the afternoon, but overall lots of sunshine to get your Thursday morning started. Daytona Beach, 10 o'clock in the morning, hour by hour, early morning future track, pretty much holding it in the upper 60s, about 70 to 72 for a high there tomorrow. And with that northeast breeze, we're going to have some gusty and choppy boating conditions both tomorrow and again on Friday. The beaches, yeah, make sure you watch out for rip currents, but overall uh, not too bad. Overall cooler if you're traveling tomorrow, high pressures moving in, so nice travel weather all throughout the southeast, including on Friday as temperatures warm back from the low 70s tomorrow to mid and upper 70s on Friday and will continue the warming trend to around 80 degrees on Saturday. High pressure will move off the east coast. So we get more of an east and southeast flow. A little moisture out in the Gulf. Here comes our next cold front and we will slowly warm up day by day until we hit Monday and then temperatures may dive as much as 15 to 20 degrees. So that's a little ways down the road. Once you get back into work and school, it's going to feel a bit more like the first part of winter as opposed to the uh, mid to latter part of fall. Now temperatures for tonight, 57 clearing out. It's cooling down northwest wind at about 10 miles an hour. Sunshine returns tomorrow, breezy and cooler with more clouds by the afternoon, increasing cloud cover, but still mostly rain free for Black Friday shoppers and for the weekend activities, your five day with the weekend in view shows a very nice overall holiday weekend. Enjoy it and we'll be right back. Orange County health officials are responding to a spike in the number of cases of syphilis. So far this year, 198 cases have been reported, 23% more than this time last year when there were 175 cases. Health officials plan to launch a new education campaign this week to fight the spread of the sexually transmitted disease. Rockledge City employees may be getting a one-time extra payment. The city had budgeted for an increase in health insurance premiums that didn't happen. So now leaders want to give some of that money to employees. If the city council approves the plan on December 7th, employees will get between $300 and $900 in January, depending on how long they've worked for the city. NBA fans and local businesses have new hope tonight that the NBA could still play games on or around Christmas Day. Lockout negotiations have resumed, but they would likely need a deal done by Friday for that to happen. Joe Kepner, what's going on? It's not going to be easy. This is the first time both sides have talked in nearly two weeks after, mm. since the players decided to dissolve their union and then sue the league. We all remember that. The Orlando Magic were originally scheduled to play the day after Christmas at the Amway Center, but NBA Commissioner David Stern has said they would need 30 days to get the season started, meaning they would need to have an agreement in place by Friday to save games on and around Christmas. With no games to coach, Magic head coach Stan Van Gundy spent the day at Disney watching college basketball teams and says he just hopes the fans come back when the lockout does end. That's who I think we're all a little bit worried about. You, you don't know how the fans are going to take this whole thing and, and uh, how they'll come back. We have great fans in Orlando. I think they'll continue to support us, but it's certainly not an easy situation. Now Van Gundy was at Disney checking out eight college hoops teams that are in town for the Old Spice Classic, which starts tomorrow. One of those teams, Fairfield, has a local tie with Winter Park grad Adam Jones on the roster. Jones was taken in by Boston Celtics head coach Doc Rivers when his own family hit hard times when he was in high school. Jones, along with Austin Rivers, led Winter Park to a state championship his senior season. He says he's thrilled to be back in Orlando for Thanksgiving. Oh man, it feels good to be home. In the warm weather away from the cold weather feels great. Could you talk about how often you talk to, to Doc or Austin? And... Uh, I talk to my family just about every day. Text, call, tweet. I mean, we talk just about every day. It's, you know, nonstop communication, just seeing how everybody's doing, how Austin's doing at Duke, adjusting. Well, as for the ninth ranked Florida Gators, for the second year in a row, the Gators will play at the Amway Center when they take on Stetson in the Florida Citrus Sports Shootout this Monday. Tickets for the shootout start at $17. 
In college football, former Florida Gators coach Urban Meyer has denied multiple reports that he is set to become the head coach at Ohio State as early as next week. Meyer, who is currently working as an analyst for ESPN, said he has not been offered any job and there is no deal in place with Ohio State. But the Columbus Dispatch is reporting the Buckeyes will introduce Meyer as their new head coach next week. They also said terms of the contract have not been finalized. We'll be right back. Here's an update now on breaking news. An Amtrak train that crashed into a car tonight in Sanford is now back on its way to New York. The train, col uh, the train collided with a car that had stalled on the tracks just before 10 o'clock tonight. The scene has now been cleared. A deputy on the scene told us the train was headed from Tampa to New York. Covering news where you live county by county tonight in Volusia County. Anybody who depends on Votran to get around will have to find a different ride tomorrow. There will be no bus service in Volusia County because of the Thanksgiving holiday. This includes the Orlando Express and all connector routes. Normal bus service will resume on Friday. In Lake County, next week, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission will treat Lake Harris for hydrilla. Hydrilla is an invasive aquatic plant that's spread easily by boats. It clogs waterways and chokes out native plants that are beneficial to the lakes. In Seminole County tonight, health officials are warning residents about a rabies alert. The warning has been issued since three raccoons in the area have tested positive just in the past week. Rabies can be fatal, of course, to people and some animals. This alert is in effect for the next two months. Another big milestone tonight for the Dr. Phillips Performing Arts Center. There's now a huge crane on the construction site. It was assembled this week and can be seen from miles away. DPAC, as it's called, will be a destination for arts, cultural, and entertainment programming. It's under construction in downtown Orlando near City Hall. Up next, Tom Terry's back with the wake-up forecast for your neighborhood. Hi, Chief Meteorologist Tom Terry. Get your Central Florida five-day forecast from Severe Weather Center 9 every morning in the Orlando Sentinel. Well, here we go. It is almost the holidays as we get your morning started on your Thanksgiving morning, cooling down 58 degrees at 5 o'clock. A dry day ahead, a slow warm up to 73 tomorrow. Black Friday shopping looks fantastic or just taking a stroll in the park. And we'll be warming up this weekend. Marty? It all looks good. Thanks, Tom. And be sure to watch Eyewitness News Daybreak tomorrow morning starting at 5 a.m. and get weather and traffic information every 10 minutes. In the meantime, thanks for watching Channel 9 Eyewitness News and happy Thanksgiving. Nightline starts in about 10 seconds.